this is a diminished chords guitar lesson. This video is a complete tutorial and an ultimate guide on how to use diminished chords on the guitar. I'll show you everything you need to know to understand diminished chords and diminished seventh chords and how to use them effectively and tastefully. If you're a songwriter, if you're an improviser, if you want to play your favorite songs and understand them, or if you're just curious about theory, then this lesson is for you because diminished chords and diminished seventh chords are used in almost every genre of music. So no matter what you're into, understanding this fascinating and mind-blowing chord type is going to help you out. We're going to cover seven things in this comprehensive diminished chords guitar lesson. First, I'm going to very quickly define and explain diminished triads, diminished seventh chords, and half diminished chords and where they come from. Then I'll show you the three diminished seven chord shapes that you need to know. After that, I'll show you how those three chord shapes actually equal 12 guitar chord voicings because the diminished seven structure is symmetrical and it inverts to itself. You'll see what I mean. After that, I'll show you the coolest part, the reason that diminished seventh chords are so powerful, which is how they can be used as chromatic chords and how diminished seventh chords can resolve to add tension and resolution to any chord progression. Then I'll show you how diminished seventh chords are most commonly used, which is as passing chords. After that, we'll get to the kind of mind blowing part, which is how we can use diminished seventh chords to modulate, to actually change keys to any key quite easily. And lastly, I want to show you how I improvise freely all over the guitar with diminished seventh chords to express myself and to find song ideas by implementing the techniques from this video. That is what we're going to cover. Let's get into it. By the way, I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. I have new videos every week. Let's quickly define the types of diminished chords. Very often if someone says diminished, they're actually talking about diminished seventh. And I do that too. I said diminished and I'm using diminished seven, but there is a diminished triad. Let's understand that first. We're going to play C third fret fifth string and everything that I try to understand structure wise, whether it's a chord structure or a scale structure, I want to see it really clearly along one string. This helps me just see it in this very simplistic linear fashion. So I can see, okay, a minor third up from that first note, this is the root, that's the flat three of the chord. And so this has one flat three and a diminished triad has flat five. And what we want to see by doing this is that there's two distances that are the same thing, which is a minor third, minor third up, minor third up. So two minor thirds, this is one flat three flat five. The reason it is called a diminished triad is because of the flat five, which technically that interval is called a diminished fifth. So this is a minor third, which a minor chord does as well, but it also has a diminished fifth. So it is called a diminished triad. Where this chord comes, comes from is that it is the seventh chord of a major key. Um, if you want to see a bunch of chords through keys and the exact shapes for them, including the diminished chord, you can get my chord chart called Chords with Color. It shows five different keys, a bunch of chords through a bunch of options for chords. There's a link in the top of the description to get that. And one of the things it will show us is chords through the key of C. So we'll have C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and here's that seventh chord. And it's just built into the key. So that's where diminished triad comes from. It's the seventh chord of the major scale. Let's talk about diminished seventh for a second. If we take that same structure off C, we go a minor third up to flat three, a minor third up again to flat five, a diminished seventh chord adds on another note that is once again a minor third up. So we get the same distance, same distance, same distance. This is a symmetrical chord structure because if you go up another minor third, you get back to C. Okay, so we have the root, the flat three, the flat five. This is called the double flat seven and then goes up to the root again. Why is that one note called double flat seven? It's quite straightforward actually because the diminished seventh chord naturally exists as the seventh chord, <laughs> different way of saying seventh chord, as the seventh chord in the harmonic minor scale. So if this is the root of the harmonic minor scale, one, two, flat, three, four, five, flat, six, seven, one. So the chord that naturally is built off of that seventh note of the scale is diminished seven. Check out my video on the chords through the harmonic minor scale to understand that better. There's a link in the description. But if we just count from the root of the diminished chord that we were outlining here, and we just don't even say flat or sharp or any of the numbers. We just say one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. That note that we called double flat seven lands as the seventh note. And there's already a six, so you can't call it, there's a flat six, you can't call it natural six. So that's a little confusing, don't worry about it, but it's just that it naturally is from a scale and that you count the numbers, and if it lands as the seventh number, you have to call it some kind of seven. So it's not seven, it's not flat seven, it's one step below flat seven, but it is the seventh note of the scale when you count it off of the uh, diminished chord root, so therefore it's double flat seven. If that's confusing, don't worry, that's not totally necessary to take advantage of how awesome this chord is and everything else we're talking about, but it's worth pointing out since that label, double flat seven, is uh, kind of strange and deserves an explanation. So that double flat seven, I call it that as a chord tone, but as an interval, double flat seven is called a diminished seventh interval. This is why the name of the diminished seventh chord exists. It's a diminished seventh chord because it has a diminished seventh interval in it. That's not how every chord name works across the board, but that's how this one works. It actually has a diminished seventh chord interval, and it also has a diminished fifth in it, which we'll come back to in a minute. So here's an exercise to do that is really great to get the sound in your ear and understand the structure, which is make sure you first can just do what we did along one string, minor third, minor third, minor third. You're seeing, we really need to see and feel how this is symmetrical. And then what I challenge you to do is to make sure you can cross strings with a minor third. So from this note, note to the next string. What's the minor third physical distance? In this case, crossing strings over, I'm going to go two frets over and one string up and then minor third up, minor third up. So the exercise I want you to try is to try to go from the lowest note or one of these three lowest notes, start on any of these, go up minor third, minor third, keep going, cross strings whenever you want and try to go all the way as high as you can and then come back down. So minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third. Okay, I'm on the top string now. You don't have to go to the highest note, but just. Get back down to where we started by crossing wherever you want to and going minor third, minor third constantly. Really great kind of mapping theory exercise on the fretboard. And by doing that, you're literally just playing a diminished seventh chord arpeggio from your lowest possible note to the highest possible and back. Very cool. So when I think of song examples that use the diminished seventh chord, one of the first ones that comes to mind is a song called How Insensitive by Antonio Carlos Jobim. Bossa Nova music uses a ton of diminished seventh chords, even though many, many other genres do as well. Uh, but this song comes to mind where we have D minor triad, um, and then it goes down a half step to C sharp diminished seven. So right away we can interpret this in the way that we talked about where the diminished seventh chord is the seventh chord, it's the final chord that just naturally comes from the harmonic minor scale. So this would be the one chord of D harmonic minor. This would be the seventh chord of D harmonic minor. So you could think of those as coming from the same scale. The melody, it's just at the, be the beginning goes, ah, insensitive. Then it moves on and changes a bunch of keys. So it goes all over the place, but those first two chords, you could loop those and then play a harmonic minor scale over it. Let's do that real quick. So I'm gonna loop this. And then the next one. And just that. Whether I got a good loop or not, I don't know, but. Check out my video on how to learn and practice the harmonic minor scale if you're interested in playing around with that scale. And then there's half diminished. And why is it called half diminished? It's also called minor seven flat five. That's the exact same chord. So why is there half diminished? And in contrast to that, the diminished seventh chord is often referred to as fully diminished or full diminished. Well, here's what's going on with that. If we take our arpeggio again, we're gonna have one, we're gonna have flat three, we're gonna have flat five. And instead of double flat seven, we're gonna have regular flat seven or just flat seven. So one, flat three, flat five, flat seven. We should see that as a whole step or two frets below C, two frets below the root. So root, flat seven, and then 
flat five, flat three, and the root. So why is it called half diminished? Well, let's go back to diminished seven for a second, which is often called fully diminished seven or full diminished seven. Well, full diminished seven has one flat three, flat five, which is diminished fifth, and then double flat seven, which is diminished seven. So it has two things that are diminished in it. Okay. Half diminished has just one of those. It has half of them. So it's half diminished versus fully diminished. So half diminished has that diminished fifth. It has the flat five, but it does not have the diminished seven. It does not have a double flat seven. If you want to know more about where these chords come from, how to map out the fretboard and see chord construction better for any types of chords, then definitely check out my chord theory playlist. Now I'm going to show you the three physical shapes of diminished seventh chords that you definitely want to know on the guitar to use all of the cool stuff that we're going to still talk about in this video. Here's the sixth string rooted version. We're skipping the A string and there's a couple ways to place the left hand fingers here. You can bar with your first finger here and put your third finger down here. I also actually quite like playing with the tips of my fingers, third finger, first finger, fourth finger, and middle up there. So that's the sixth string rooted off C. This is how I want you to practice these. This is off C on the fifth string. This is a really nice, easy to play uh, chord shape all the tips of the fingers and then let's go ahead up here off C as well all the tips of the fingers little kind of a box shape there so the way I want you to practice these is to rotate through them like this you can choose different roots that's just off of C but that's to get used to those so now that you know those three physical chord shapes check this out usually when we learn chords and we want to multiply our voicings of those chords by using inversions, we have to put in a lot of work. So for example, if I play major seven chord and I learn three of those, major seven chord, major seven chord, major seven chord, and then I want to expand my voicings of them by learning inversions, well, first inversion, major seven chord, I have to learn this shape, the second inversion, major seven chord, I have to learn this shape. Not only are they physically hard to play, you just have to rearrange your fingers and relearn this. Okay, so here's major seven here. This is the second inversion, major seven, first inversion. Don't worry about the details of those, but it's just new shape, new shape, new shape, drill, drill, drill. Very worth doing. I love working on that. But the diminished seventh chords, we get all of those as a freebie because it's symmetrical, because we learned that it's a minor third on a minor third on a minor third. And if you keep going, you land back on the root minor third, it's symmetrical. And so therefore every minor third distance, every three frets, you can do play the same physical shape and you get an inversion of what you just played. So this is the same exact chord as this and as this and as this and as this, those are all the same exact notes just placed in a different order. So they're all inversions of the shape inverts to itself is the way that I like to explain it. So all of these. So what I want you to practice here is take each shape and just practice visualizing and being able to go up a minor third and move around that way. And this is what you'll hear all the time. It's like an old, old movie soundtrack kind of uh, sound that we might think of it as that. Um, but also you'll hear it often if you get used to that and play it, you'll hear it often in people's improvisations. I was just listening to a record with Julian Lodge and um, Bill Frizzell. And there's a moment in there where sure enough, you hear him just go up that diminished chord and then resolve, which we're, we're going to talk about next. That exact little figure is used in Michelle by the Beatles. Michelle, my bell, these are words that go So hopefully you're going to practice just going up and down minor thirds with each shape. It takes a little getting used to, but it's really straightforward. But just like we practiced crossing strings before with the single notes, I want you to cross strings with the shapes as well. So go from your lowest somewhere down here, kind of low, go up a minor third, up a minor third, whenever you want to cross strings, cross strings and get as high as you feel comfortable and then go down, cross strings. So the exercise here is 
being able to do it along the strings, but then being able to cross strings, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going as low as you can, as high as you can, back down. We'll be doing a lot more of that in just a second when we're going to use this to resolve and modulate to new places harmonically. Okay, this next part is where it really starts to get game changing. This is where we're using diminished seventh chords as chromatic chords. But before we do that, I have to explain how with these inversions that we just learned, how it inverts to itself, and with the functionality that we talked about how it's the seventh chord of the harmonic minor scale, like in that progression from how insensitive, well, the purpose of this chord, how it functions is that it causes tension and then it resolves, right? You can hear that wanting to go somewhere. Um, I have a video on functional harmony that, ex that explains that really well, so check that out if you are interested. But let's look at this for a second and say we're doing our, our little progression that was D minor to C sharp diminished. Well, because of our inversions, I just wanna show you this real quickly. Because of the, our inversions, you can move around with those and then resolve to that same chord. So D minor, C sharp, right? I still just went C sharp diminished to D minor, but I ended up at a different place, D minor, um, by moving it around so much. So we're not moving harmonically yet, but we're just letting that voicing really become quite dynamic. The way to start doing this is to have a way for yourself to think of how a diminished seventh chord can resolve. What direction should it go? Really, it can go so many places because of this shape being, any of these notes are the root of this shape, depending on where we are in that whole inversion thing. So a simple way to think of it, if you wanna just think of it this way, it works really well. Think of your lowest note, and if you're in on a diminished seventh chord shape, that this lowest note can resolve up, to a major chord or a minor chord anytime, and that lowest note can resolve down to a major chord or a minor chord anytime. So it's gonna resolve down a whole step or up a half step. So if you play these anywhere and you play all around, you end up here, you think, okay, there's my lowest note. I can resolve up a half step to a major chord or a minor chord, or I can resolve down a whole step to a major chord or a minor chord. In our case, I was still trying to resolve to D minor, so I'm going up to D minor. So I often just think of it that way, but you can also just say, anytime you're on any of these shapes, any of these notes function the same way. If that is the note you're thinking of, and I'm thinking of these notes as kind of pointing to a resolution. They're kind of pointing to where they wanna go. So if I'm thinking top note, don't even worry about what note it is, but just say, well, this top note could be the root, or it could be the leading tone, or it doesn't matter what we call it. This top note, I can resolve to a chord whose root is a half step above that. Okay, so you could do whatever you need to think of that. Here's this note. Half step above it is happens to be B. Okay. Oh, that works. And we hear it's in a new tonality from where we were before. Or how about this one? Half step above or whole step below? Okay. Well, a whole step below this note here is D. Okay. So there's that D minor resolution. So you can think of it that way. Um, any of these notes, half step above or whole step below. So that's pretty crazy. So really you're, you're right here. All four of these can go half step above or whole step below to a major or minor chord. So that's many, many, many options. Now where it starts to get really cool is when you take that ability that we just learned where you understand the structure and where it can resolve to, and then we let ourselves just place it in front of and point towards any chord that is in the key. So if we're just in the key of C, it's the one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, that kind of stuff is in my chord theory series. If you uh, don't quite understand that, that's okay. Go check out that series. But if you know these chords that are just kind of numbered through the key, well, you can take that diminished seven idea of pointing it towards something and just place it a half step below or a whole step above to resolve to something in the key. And you can do that with any of the chords. So this is called a chromatic chord. I have a video on chromatic chords. Check that out if you wanna learn more about that. It's kind of like a dominant seven to one function, which then you're putting that in front of other chords. There's something called a secondary dominant. This is also called an applied dominant. Just throwing some vocabulary terms out there. Don't worry about if you understand them. Worry about if you understand this to this and just being able to practice that point of saying all that is that this is called a secondary diminished seventh chord or an applied diminished seventh chord which is a nice term for it because you are applying it 
to whatever chord you want to apply it to. Okay, so we have our C chord, we have our two chord of the key, we have our three chord of the key. Okay, what if we want to go back to the two chord and we want to apply them in a seventh chord to it? Okay. I play this because it's a whole step above the two chord and there it resolves to it, right? So let's take a song example. What if you're playing Hallelujah. inspired by it, right? And you want to make it your own, you want to do something with it, and you're like, okay, well, I just want to like use this as a starting point. We're not even tweaking the song, we're just going to say, well, that's cool, I love this sound, this is the one to the six chord. Well, what if I just throw a diminished seventh chord, an applied diminished seventh chord, a secondary diminished seventh chord, in front of the A minor, so it's not just this, you could go... extended the progression everything so now it's something completely different it's not that song anymore that's okay that's how thing, things evolved that's how we get our own ideas etc so just took that progression oh, i love one to six back and forth and back and forth but maybe it's feeling a little plain one day throw that spice in there to target it and you can do this by stretching out the progression and adding the chord in like we just did so it's really changing the progression it's really adding a new chord or you can play that and like one beat preceding the chord. And then you're not actually changing the chord progression, you're just adding this little kind of passing tone chromatic flavor for a second. You can do these kinds of things with any chord progression. And I have a whole series on the most common chord progressions. So check that out if you want to get some really common chord progressions and then start playing around with them. So here's the most common way that diminished seventh chords are used in music, which is as passing chords, as chromatic diminished passing chords. It's functioning exactly how we just talked about with applied chords, secondary diminished chords, that type of thing, targeting, resolving, pointing towards something, but specifically on a path between chords. So if we're in that key of C where we have C major, D minor, E minor, well, there's a whole step between C and D. So if you connect between them by going up a half step from C and then you're pointing towards D minor, then you have just used a chromatic diminished passing chord. D minor leading to E minor. Now E minor to F are half step apart already in the key. So to do this uh, exercise that I would do it through a whole key, I would create that diminished chord on the same root, on the E leading to F, okay? F to G are usually in the key, okay? So this is exactly the exercise that I would actually recommend that you do. I recommend you do this on off the sixth string, off the fifth string, and off the fourth string. So I might take like the key of F, play the one chord, play the diminished seventh chords that, that is targeting the two chord. Here's the two chord. Target the three chord. Here's the three chord. Target the four chord. Notice I'm up, I'm applying it to the next chord. That's how I'm referring to it. Okay, I'm targeting the fourth chord. Okay, target the five chord. Here's the five chord. Target the sixth chord next. Sounds so good. Okay, a couple examples of this being used in real music. There's a beautiful old classic song called Till There Was You. There were bells on a hill, but I never just that, those first three chords, one chord, passing diminished chord, two chord. Another example is Blackbird by the Beatles. This section right here, it's exactly this happening. This is the four chord, diminished passing chord to the five chord, diminished passing chord to the six chord. It's exactly that. Four, diminished, five, diminished, six. What we've done so far is called tonicizing. The tonic is the one chord of a key. It's the tonal center of a key. Usually that's the place that tension is created to resolve back to. So when we tonicize something that is not the one chord, that is what we're doing with the chromatic chords, the applied, the secondary diminished chord, same with secondary dominance, you are tonicizing something other than the one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord, something like that. So this, you're making this momentary feeling of it being the main home base and then you land on it. But when you land on it, you're actually like, nope, nope, we're just, we're still in that key. Now we're on the two chord and now we're on the three chord, whatever it is. So that's tonicizing. We're not actually changing keys. We're not actually modulating. So the something exciting here is with diminished chords is that we can just totally change keys and totally modulate pretty much 
anywhere. Let me just jump to an extreme example for first, right off the bat. The circle of fifths, or the circle of fourths, depending on which way you're going on it. One of the reasons it exists and one of the reasons it's useful is that it shows us what keys are most related to each other. The keys next to any other key is the most related key. It's one note is one half step different any direction you go by one key. So that means the, the key that is on the opposite side of the circle is the most distant key, the most different notes that you can possibly have. Well, modulating typically is done in a way where you try to do it to a nearby key, and you can do that in, a, in kind of a smooth way. But right away, we can see how powerful the diminished chord is. What if we wanted to modulate to the most distant key from C, which would be F sharp? Okay, and if you go to this diminished chord, that is a half step below C, so it's targeting back on C, makes perfect sense. But then you mess around with that a bit, and you move around, and you realize, oh, if I move around, look where I am now. I'm a half step below, or a whole step above F sharp, and I've just resolved to this key that is the furthest key away from C. So everything in between is possible as well. So if I, you know, I'm going to the two chord, one chord, and then I try to tonicize that two chord, like I'm gonna go to it, but then I just move around and maybe resolve to B major instead by saying, using the logic that we had before. Oh, it's a half step above from where I was. Off to B major, which was a very different place than it would have maybe gone if I was just targeting that next passing chord to the two chord. So you can go anywhere. You can play around with this like crazy to actually modulate and change keys. To technically have changed keys, then you want to sit in that other key, kind of use it for a minute, do a section of a song that way, improvise there for a while, whatever it is that you're doing, um, and then find a way to get to get back and explore things this way. So whether you're doing a subtle key change or something extreme, the, the diminished chord can be your wormhole, your portal that gets you there um, in a very smooth musical way. So lastly, I just want to show you how with all of that stuff, um, I use all of it when I'm just totally freely improvising on the guitar. I like to just play in in kind of some kind of tonality, but I don't stick there for, for long. And I think a lot in functional harmony. And I'm just sharing this with you because it's really part of my creative process and part of my playing. Um, so any chord I'm on, I really let myself go anywhere and do anything. So I'm playing this A dominant seventh chord right now. I'll just really move it anywhere. With every chord, I'm thinking of what could it do, what, where could it go? It doesn't have to be in a key. Sometimes I'm really not thinking in a key, but I'll resolve this. So for this moment, I'm thinking in G minor, G blues. I went to the diminished chord. I'm probably, I'm gonna kind of overuse this since we're talking about diminished chords, but it's something that I'll use often just when it feels right, okay? So now I can resolve to anything I want with this and just start fresh. So I might go to, because it was a whole step above E, now I'm in E, so I'm gonna just play there. I'm okay if it's not totally cohesive, I'm exploring. I did the same thing, not on purpose, it's just what was working. There's the tonic of C or the, or the root note of C, uh, of, of E, not C. And that's a great spot to hit that diminished chord and start to, to go somewhere else. Now. new place and flavor now. So I'm really moving all over the place. I'm not thinking I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, I'm going to modulate to this. I'm just like, where am I right now in this moment and where can that tension resolve to? So I ended up in F here. I was playing 
I don't, I don't remember where I, where I came from. So it's just really a, a very kind of flow state kind of process. And when I hit something that just feels amazing, maybe I repeat it some, maybe it turns into kind of a compositional idea, or I just continue to work on it as an improvisational idea. But um, just wanted to demonstrate a little bit how um, how important that one technique, the diminished seventh chord and everything that it can do, how it can move around and modulate, is really an important part of my personal creative flow when I'm when I'm just playing, when I'm improvising, when I'm composing, when I'm songwriting, when I'm searching for ideas, when I'm trying to find inspiration, all of that stuff. It's not the only thing, but it's a, it's a pretty big one because it can take you from anywhere to anywhere. A very practical example too is at a gig, a certain kind of gig, where I'm just playing music, background music um, that is provided for a function or something like that. Very common kind of kind of performance, kind of gig that I've done many, many times. When I'm playing some repertoire music and I want to not stop playing and connect from one to the other, I'll improvise a little bit and whatever key I was into, wherever I'm going, whatever tempo, whatever, anything, that diminished seventh chord comes up as an important tool to get me from one place to the other. So it's not required to use it that way, um, but it's it's a really fun way to just kind of keep playing, connect things, connect things, move one idea to the next, see how all music is just connected uh, as a web of information that we can just uh, grab a little here, grab a little there, and see how it's all kind of more the same than it is different. If you want to learn more about chords, chord voicings, chords through keys, like the one chord, two chord, three chord, that kind of thing, adding colors to chords, that is the extended notes, which are color notes, then get my chord chart called Chords with Color. It's totally free. There's a link in the top of the description to grab that, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color. Now you know so much about diminished seventh chords, definitely enough to be dangerous with them. I hope you have fun playing around with something from that lesson. There's a lot to grab from there. So grab something and see if you can have fun playing with that. I didn't mention one thing in this video, and that is how diminished seventh chords are so often used. The diminished seventh chord shapes, the exact ones we played, are used as rootless voicings of dominant seven flat nine. Well, I didn't mention it because I already did a whole video on exactly that. It has a bunch of visuals and diagrams for you to check it out and follow along. And especially after this video, you'll probably get the hang of that concept uh, pretty well. So I highly recommend that you check that out next. There'll be a link in the top of the links mentioned section in the description, or you can go to the link on this uh, screen right now if you're watching on YouTube. I post a new lesson video every week. I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.